It's time. This is it, Danny Polschuk. I've been calling sure. Polschuk. Is that is is it correct yeah, by yeah, the way? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's correct. Because I'm always worried about mispronouncing people's names, as people yeah, do yeah. it to me. No. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> you you must have. <laughs> What's your last name? It's Paludacus. That's why I only go with Pantelis, because already it fucks it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people yeah, used to complain to at the mics. Have a similar plight. Yeah, they used to always get pissed off. They'd be like, "Can you? Like, why are you pretending like there's two of you? Like, just go with one <laughs> fucking name. We're not gonna confuse you. Just stop it." Right. Like, yeah, All right. That's funny. Yo, I was listening to there's Punching no... Down. By oh, the way, yeah. I was listening to yeah. Punching Down, and you said something. I was like, "Thank God somebody's fucking saying it." Um, just this fatigue of the people on sides like people joining groups on just both yeah. sides like all of it is stupid oh yeah it's insane it, it's uh i was uh, i think i was talking about but like this one uh this like tech guy he basically said like he's like some i forget what his name is paul graham or something but he basically was like once this stuff all ended he's like it felt like you know when you have those background processes in your computer running that just like slows your computer down he's like it feels like one of those just turned off like you just closed it, kind of. Yeah, they just came. It, like <laughs> it was like an interesting way you just like killed one of those background processes and just. I mean, I was like glued to the news, and then I'm like, I don't even watch it anymore. I'm like, it's just, it's just like that. I just like I stopped caring. Yeah, we all fell for it. There was four years of what's he gonna say, what's she gonna say, what's gonna happen, and now I'm looking back like, what a waste of fucking time. I mean, it was like, it, yeah, it definitely a waste of time. It was total. There was a total element to it of just like. I don't know. And I don't want to say entertainment because, it, it, you know, it did matter. But like I was always of the thing where people are like, you know, this country's never going to like America. They're like, it's never going to go back. And I'm like, I don't know. Like they've said that about every like one side has said that about the president every time. Every president ever is posing. and goes, we're never going to get this country back, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, it's fine. It's always fine. Yeah, well, we'll make it out of this. But you you and fucking Ryan I mean, Long, I'd be worried if I, you guys are both from I'd Canada, say, right? I'd be worried if I was. Yeah, we're both from Toronto. Yeah, so you guys are from outside of Toronto, opposite sides. You guys aren't fucking worried. You've you've been here. You see how people bitch. It happens. We get over it. Oh, we move on. Of course. But I'm saying the same with America, though. It's like you know, it's like people are like, "Oh, this country's never gonna get you know, never gonna get back." And you're like, "It's fucking fine." So now, what are you doing to waste your time? No. Like I've seen the the videos that uh, you guys are putting up. Which, by the way, I've said this many times. It's 100 percent the truth. Mike has said the same thing. There's no one right now in comedy that's putting as funny and as pointed videos out regularly as you guys. Oh, thanks, man. You, your finger's on the pulse, and the goal is clearly just to be funny, which is our fucking job. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, like, it's not like, you know, half of this. Half, I mean, there's not a lot on the right, but a lot of the left stuff is really just, like, a message with no humor. They're just trying to push their their agenda with like you're like there wasn't. It's not at all funny. Yeah, how's the just, comedy scene there now? Like, what are you what are you dealing with over there? Um, it's. I mean, it's going to be full. So like when I got like basically in the summer, there was the stand up New York was putting on outdoor shows, right? Because like only indoor dining has only been open since I think uh, September thirtieth. September 29th. Okay. So that was the first time you could even go indoors anywhere here. Uh, and then they've been doing outdoor shows. Like I perform at like the stand, like I'm hosting there tomorrow night, but it's only because it's like, you know, the weather rating, but once it turns, it, that'll be it. Cause they're, they're, they're not allowing, it's really stupid to be honest, but they're not allowing like they're allowing indoor dining. But the moment someone starts talking, you're like, okay, that's illegal. Yeah, th that's fucking... They did the same thing here where the rules didn't make any sense and then it just shut everything down. Yeah, but, like, I get it for, like, if you want to say, hey, like, live music, you can't have live music. Because, like, people stand, they move around, but, like, for comedy, they're straight up being like, look, these people are sitting there eating dinner. They're by your standards. They're all, like, you know, spaced apart, whatever. The, you know, the amount of people. All we're asking is, can we put a guy in the corner to talk while they eat their dinner? And they're like, no. Which, again, I don't understand. What would that change? Are you telling me that if you're not performing, no one's getting COVID, but if you are, they're all fucking sick? It doesn't, it doesn't make any fucking yeah, sense. Yeah, but it's... Exactly. I, well, they're, what they're doing is they're just they're lumping comedy in with music where they're basically saying, like, oh, you know, they're, it's both entertaining. But, like, they fucking open bowling alleys. They're like, yeah, you or can bowl. <laughs> bowling alleys like, are bowling. open. 
Yeah, they're like bowling alleys are open, and then they're like, but you can't have a comedy show, and people are just like, fuck this. But anyways, it's we're we're within ten days of everything completely shutting down again. So okay, so you guys are, are you you don't come back ever to Canada at all, or are you full time in the states? I can't. Uh, I mean, I live here. I came back. I mean, like if it wasn't for COVID, I would be coming back and forth more. But uh, they have the 14 day isolation. So like I came back in end of July because I just had some like family stuff. But it's like it's a real pain in the ass. Like yeah. you got to isolate for 14 days before you can even like do anything. Like, And then now there's nothing to even do. So it's like I didn't see my family. So. so do they do that to you when you get back to the States also, right? No. So they don't. No, so that's just better, when you're going to Canada. Because I know for me, I was looking at maybe flying down the States again. And then I was thinking, fuck, when I get back, that's two weeks where I can't do shit. Because apparently yeah, they yeah. monitor you. I had a buddy went down to Boston for some kind of a fight thing. And when he got yeah. back, they were monitoring to make sure that he doesn't leave yeah, his they, fucking house. Well, I don't know about what it was for him because it's, it's, it is provincial, I think. So probably it's slightly different. But like I was when I got back in the summer, I got like three phone calls and... But it's like if you miss the phone call, which I did twice, and then they're apparently they're like if you miss three phone calls, someone like sh- cops like show up at your house to make sure you're there. But like they, you can't call it back, and I really was just like away from my phone, like it wasn't even like I was, like I was I was at quarantining. I just happened to not have my phone on me at the time. But uh, and then they sent you like emails and stuff. But like they said, they're like you can't leave the property. And then like you know I went like out for like uh like I went like you know for a walk or like for a run or something. And like technically, like that was a violation, but I'm like, whatever, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, like unless I'm actively going to fuck with old people, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, I was like, what? I can't go for like you know, a, like a run in like the suburbs. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I, I know they're just trying to cover their bases or whatever, but that's technically the rules. And they they do contact you, and I think they do occasional check ins, but I can't I wait know. for the day where we find out your run killed eight people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> Yeah, like a senior uh, old folks home just decimated by my job. They, they trace it back to you. There's just a file photo. <laughs> yeah, I'm just me like jo- coughing outside of a fucking old folks home as I'm just like sucking air. And he ran uh, away, crossed the border, so we can't get him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that they get these rapid tests going so it's like, you know, they can... Uh, Rogan was... Uh, like, I heard that um, the problem with the rapid test is everybody wants them. I was talking about on, on a morning podcast I was doing, but they're like, no, 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 they're 50% effective, so they're no good. But is that is that factual, 50% effective? Or are people saying that? I don't fucking know. Well, I saw Elon Musk has COVID, and he basically said he took four tests, and two of them came back positive, two of them came back negative. But then uh, in Calgary right now, apparently they this like the country Canada's bought millions of these tests. Okay. And they're doing like so right now you can fly into Calgary, and you don't need to self isolate for 14 days. You basically take a test when you arrive. If it's negative, then you have to take another test. I think six days later, but like not at the airport, just like in the city. So theoretically, like if you want to go to Vancouver or something, it doesn't make sense to go to like east, but. Especially coming from the east, but like you know, if you're going west to east, or if you don't really care, you can like fly into Calgary, take the test. You just have to be back there like six days later to confirm, take another test to confirm it, and then you don't have to isolate for 14 days. And if that works, then they're gonna start because they can't just keep the border locked indefinitely. Like, oh, this is already too much. Yeah, it's insane. I had to fucking stop everything. Yeah, I want to leave. You want to come back? I wanted to leave. I was planning everything. We were, and then everything just shut down. Well, I mean, you can leave. You just have to self-isolate. But, I mean, what's there even do there? Well, there you go. There you fucking go. It's almost, if anything, it's like, go for it, leave, and then, like, you know, whatever. Just suck it up and self-isolate when you come back, I guess. Yeah, there's a chance. You're not doing anything anyways. There's a chance I'm going to fucking escape in a bit and just go to the States for a bit and come back because it's going to be too much. Mike doesn't care because Mike isolated himself. He bought, like, a place uh, up north. So he just does yeah. all the podcasts remotely. And he's like, I got a nice. lake. <laughs> I bought some arcades. He's so fucking comfortable. So he's like, I'm fine. I'm yeah. doing my podcast. No one's bothering me. But me, I'm getting antsy. I miss stand up. I miss, I want to get back out there. Yeah. And everything's cool. Like all the clubs are, I mean, I guess there's only one club there, right? Yeah. And, well, the thing English, is, English, club. English, but Mike was allowing, we were doing English at his club. People were coming out. It was a fucking good time. Uh, English and uh, French over there. And they just what, shut the, everything the down. Bordel the bordel, yeah. 
They yeah, did everything. Yeah. They put plexiglass. Awesome. They followed all the rules. Yeah, actually, we should talk about that too because Mike wanted when everything starts again, you know, to do more English shows. And there's two rooms now. He's building a second room there. So yeah. we wanted to be a good spot for people to come in and do uh, shows. And oh, then 100%. they I fucked us. Oh, dude, you'd have a good time. Yeah, I love Montreal. Yeah, we'd hook I mean, something I was, up. And I was I I was at the last. I think I did the last weekend of the comedy works before it burned down. I headlined there, and then it fucking. Fuck. Yeah, yeah that so. was a uh, that was suspicious yeah, that was... fire, bro. Let me tell you. <laughs> that was. That was, I've been saying it for a while. Like, fuck, that's suspicious. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was a shame. But, like literally, I'm like the last weekend before that. So you took down the comedy works. I did take down the comedy works, yeah. The world famous Jimbo's comedy works. I yeah. took it down. Look, man, it's something. That's a title. That's that's history making <laughs> shit right there. Yeah. That's uh it was uh I put it on my bio. <laughs> yeah, burned down the comedy works. <laughs> so are you guys are you spending most of your time now writing, podcasting, fuck around? Like what are you focusing on? Uh pretty much. Like there's you know, I'm doing like I'm doing like a little bit of stand up. And then I've been doing some videos with like, with Ryan, um, and then podcasting as well. It's uh, about it. There's not like a crazy amount of stuff to do, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, here, but I mean, there isn't really anywhere. And uh, and then I also I'm like the editor of this website, so I I work on that too. Okay, so you so, do keep busy. Yeah, I keep busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, it's like you know, like the hard times. If you ever heard, of I've heard hard of hard times. times yeah. They're like a really, they're actually a really big one. So it's like they started this like kind of finance satire site, like as an offshoot or whatever. So I've been like working on that. Oh, that's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. I'm just kind of trying to stay busy. I mean, I figure out wherever I would be right now, I wouldn't be that busy. We're going to Tampa actually to do, you know, like uh, Revenge of the Sis. Yeah, I like those guys. And like, yeah, you know those dudes and like yeah. uh, Dick Masterson or whatever. So like he rented a theater in Tampa. Uh, on December twelfth, and like this giant theater, and it's like I think it's like sold out. And oh, they're allowed. Like, it's true. Florida does whatever the fuck it wants. Well, it's Florida. Florida yeah. Doesn't <laughs> shit about anything. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking oh shit. Yeah, I had seen something. Mersh was tweeting something. I don't remember. But oh, yeah, that's what they're like doing. Road rage Tampa or whatever. That's it. Oh fuck, that. that's badass, dude. Yeah. So we're gonna go to that, and then I'm probably gonna end up just like sticking around in Florida for maybe a week after that, and just. Get some sun and. Well, what else? I mean, it's not like you're gonna fucking do anything in New York. I know, and it's gonna be fucking cold here. So, you know what surprised me, dude, about you and Ryan? Because uh, I used to complain that, like, out of Toronto, everyone that I was seeing was very, very fucking woke. You know? Oh yeah. And I was like, what the fuck, man? There's no, there's no more good comics. Like, there, why isn't funny the priority? And then you guys, when I started to watch your videos, and I started to see you guys come out, and I didn't even know when I found out you from Toronto. I was like, what the fuck happened? Why are yeah. these guys not being talked about more? Like, well, the, it's funny because we were doing that exact same thing in Toronto, and they were just like, it just they weren't. Nobody was, especially like any sort of industry was like they were like didn't want any of that. That was like we were essentially like the antithesis of what they were interested in. So, and you know what's fucked up is everything they were interested in lost money. Oh, of course, but again, it's like I mean, if you want to talk, if you're talking about anything that's like whatever, see, it's like they're not into they're point is not to make money it's like their point is to fucking burn it like it's throwing it in an incinerator like all the government stuff is like they're, they're, they don't be like oh this lost money they're just like oh this check 400 boxes for whatever we needed to whatever and then it's just that's it like they don't care yeah they had i didn't even know for the longest time i think there was a, a post recently that mike made fun of that um the cbc was saying you know we're the place to go for podcasts and they had like a list of these fucking podcasts no one's ever heard of and uh, for comedy, and none of them are comedy podcasts. None of them are funny. Who the fuck are these people? Like, and who's yeah, listening like, no. to these fucking shows? No, no one knows that they exist. Who's gonna go on the CBC? No, and be no. like, what does the CBC recommend? Oh no, CBC has like, I mean, the only, obviously they have Shit's Creek, which is like, I'm, they're gonna hang on to that for the next ten years probably. But like, you know, they're I don't know. Nobody really, nobody like under fifty years old really watches CBC like for comedy. Which is funny because the, the, the market Shit's that they're trying to cut into, right? They don't even have the yeah. demographic. No, 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 not at all. It's it's such a weird thing, but it's like that's what happens when the government, you know, it's it's the government. I don't know. I'm sure the BBC is doing something somewhat similar. Yeah, they do the same shit. I mean, the States, at least what from what I see, is because it's such a, all right, well, if you can make money, fucking try it, do it. 
and people go behind it. Here, everyone's looking for a, a grant. Everyone's looking to, like you said, check a box and be like, shit, I can make this pilot if I have X person on there and we talk about X subject, sure. then I'm in. And it's always yeah. shit. Like I see friends of mine doing it. I'm like, why are you putting yourself in that box? It's not going to be funny. And well, then they after make, they do, they it's a waste of time. Because they're like, but they're like, look, it's like, all right, don't don't play that game. Don't, you know, and then they're like, but you just don't get to do anything. And yeah. they're like, that's the alternative is you just don't get to participate. So they like Ryan was making like these sketches for CBC that were like just as good as the sketches he was making now, maybe a little watered down just because like they were on CBC. But like they at one point like were like, OK, you have to have like, you know, you can't have your like writer and director and lead actor and producer be all white guys. But Ryan's like. They're all me. Yeah. He's like, I, what do you mean? He's like, they're all like, what? So I have to fire, like, I have to like apologize for me doing all these things. Like, what is it? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we're, we're three fucking people. Yeah, but he's like, but he's like, literally, like, you're penalizing me for like what? Just because it's me? So you just have, have too much skill. Essentially, they were like, look, you got to like break it up. But they're like, they don't want to give you more money for it. Like, it's not like that kind of thing. He's just like, look, it's like, it's my thing. I want to run it like it's you know it's not like a crazy thing for him to say no that's but actually they were like well but they were like well it's a problem for us because like we have to fill out these like diversity forms and like the fact is is that like you know you have to you know you're gonna have to write white guy in for all these boxes even though it is just you and it's like it's crazy how fucked is that dude imagine that shit i'm telling you man my parents are both from russia and they like grew up in like communist Russia, and I told my parents about that, and they're like, "Yeah, they're like that's kind of what Russia was like." I've been hearing that all fucking week. I've been looking yeah, at like, videos. Who? People keep saying that that came from Russia back then in the eighties, and they're like, "What the yeah, fuck are you idiots doing?" The 70s. Well, what yeah. are you doing? They're they're telling us now, like you you idiots are on the wrong track. Yeah, honestly, I told my mom that like the with the whole like diversity check check boxes, and my mom's like, "Yeah," she's like, "That's kind of what Russia was like." That is fucked, dude. I know. <laughs> that is fucked. And they're not pumped because they fucking escaped, right? Like, they were like, they got the fuck out of there. So then they see this shit and they're like, oh. And you know, you know what's fucked up is that people, comedians, I see young comics that don't realize that it's going to stunt their art form. It's going to stunt their comedy if they're always second guessing and they're worried. Like, ah, if I say this, is that yeah. it for me? Am I not getting a job anymore on TV? Am I? It's it's too much, man. But that's the, that's the system, though, in Canada, unfortunately, is you're like... You, like really, you know, networks don't really like make anything. Yeah. Comedy wise, barely anything anymore. Like it's almost like nothing. Yeah, I haven't seen anything here. Like does CTV or Global make any comedy anymore? I don't, I don't even take them seriously, man. I just talk shit about these fucking companies but all the time. You know what I mean? It's like does Comedy Network make comedy anymore, or do they just no. license Big Bang Theory? They license that kind of shit. Um, yeah. Well, and I get, I understand it. It's like it's way cheaper for them. Than to make like, dude, making shit's expensive. Like, yeah, it's really fucking expensive. So, Plus, like, if you make regard, shit, like, you're responsible. What's that? Like, if you make shit, you're responsible. So, let's say they make something, you're in it. You say something offensive offline. They're like, well, why is the CTV hiring in racists? You know, they. I mean, there's that too, but not even that so much as like, for them to license an episode of Big Bang Theory maybe costs you know, 500 grand an episode. Whereas like to make a shitty show costs <laughs> 3 million. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's like no offense though. I mean, it's like, I'm not a big bang theory fan, but it's probably not going to be as good as that. Yeah. Quality wise. Yeah. Same with me. I'm not a big, yeah, big bang theory type of guy, but come on, like they're made with quality. Yeah. But like their, their episodes cost 10 million an episode and you're like, but you can license them for like, you know, much less so anyways i get it but like you know much music used to make, like they don't make anything anymore other yeah. than shits creek which was like they're like oh what a like homegrown talent or whatever but you're like yeah but these guys all went and got famous in america yeah and are they, they selling it as homegrown talent because i i to be honest i was shocked that shits creek was on the cbc i mean i always knew it was on cbc but cbc acts like oh there's like a canadian like it, it is technically, but it's like, yeah, Eugene Levy was famous. Catherine O'Hara was famous. Like Chris Elliott, like these are all famous people in America. He's not Canadian, but the other ones like are, they're like famous American entertainers. Yeah, and they're huge too. It's not like they're they're not good and they were testing it out. Eugene yeah, Levy's like big. Like big. Yeah, he's like big in America. And so, yeah. and so is Catherine O'Hara. Like, you know, they're big. And then they just brought them back and they were like, oh, this is like a Canadian thing. We're, you know, we're giving Canadians voices. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> they were just like, it's like, why don't you give Wayne Gretzky his own talk show? Dude? Yeah. <laughs> Ask Jim Carrey if he wants to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
And, like, and you're like, and it'll be like, oh, it's another Canadian thing. You're like, fuck off. I wonder how many check boxes they fucking fill up. Pro- I mean, not a lot. That, but I'm sure everybody around them must. That's probably the only way that they. Are you more? Uh, th- and this question I've been asking a lot of comics now because I've been pushing myself more towards independent route, as in fucking Patreon. I have my own fan base, um, creating my own stuff, and not really focused on breaking into mainstream. And then. Mm-hmm. Focusing on my niche, on my chunk of, of the industry that I have. Are you doing the same thing? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Like, I, I would say so. Like, I mean, especially in Canada. Like, I had that movie, uh, Filth City or whatever, which was like, it did fairly well for a Canadian movie. But then there was like, literally, there's not a single opportunity that came from it. It was actually kind of crazy. You were like, like, but like, Canada is very much the system where it's like, you do something and then... They're like, all right, that that now you had your turn. Time for someone else's turn. Like, yeah, you know. So, anyways, you know, I, I do. I essentially, I just do what I want now because it's like, I like not that I would ever turn down anything. No, no, but, no. Why uh, the fuck would you? No, but like, I mean, it, it became pretty clear when I was like kicking around Canada, like uh, that I was like, there wasn't going to be anything happening for me now. No, it just ends, and it's good the way you put it. It does feel like that. It feels like sometimes you get something good, you've done something, you're like, huh? Right? And they're like, all right, you had your turn, but all right. Well, that was that was uh like the producers who I worked with on that movie, they were they know like Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall, and he had moved back to Toronto and he did something, and that was actually something he said where he's like, Man, it's so crazy here. It's like you do something and then they, they kind of are like, All right. And he's like, I was on fucking the Larry Sanders show, like an SCTV and or not SCTV, Kids in the Hall, sorry. And then they're like, even they don't care about him here, you know, like. Now you have to move to do something. Yeah, you have to. Well, I mean. Or do, or do it yourself. Or do it yourself. Do it yourself, which was scary to me in the beginning. Um, yeah. But then again, I had, I had help too because Mike, you know, helped because, you know, notoriety and the name and all that. So I. Quebec is different too because you guys actually have your own insulated thing. Oh, dude, on the French side? Forget the French side. On the French side, dude, Mike is bigger than Rogan. Like on the French side, it's something else. I don't even. You can't walk down the fucking street with him downtown. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like I've like you know I've I've heard all about that stuff where it's like, but you guys have like your own French industry that yeah. rivals like you know anything. Is oh yeah. He big in like France. He's big in France too, and in fucking Belgium. In Belgium, just because they speak fr- French. Because they speak French, so they get that. Because I I noticed on my Patreon, I start to get people from Belgium. Yeah. And I was like, how the fuck? And then it clicked. I go, it's because of Mike. It's because of Mike's right. French stuff. And then they see me somewhere. And, and he's uh, like, yeah, he's like, does he ever go over there for shows? And stuff? I think he's been. I think he's been. This obviously I, changed I went, everything. Yeah, yeah. I like, I went to Paris like maybe five or six years ago and they had like an English stand up club there. And uh, I did stand up there, but they also had a French club and the French club there, because I guess like stand up is like, fairly like western stand-up style is fairly new there yeah or like newish and it was like crazy they would have like six shows a night like lineups down the street like for every show it was insane yeah and they went uh, yeah it was like comedy club like jamel or something oh yeah we're uh we hate those people Oh, really? Yeah, a couple... Because we found out that that guy, I think he owns it. So, and I only found out about this through my couple of years ago. So uh, in 2018, it was the first time I ever got to participate like in Just for Laughs. And yeah. I got to open for Mike and we got to do two drink minimum live there. So yeah. there was... During the, the end of the English... Or actually during the beginning of the English portion, I think the French portion of Juste Pour Rire is, 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 is ending. So you have this cross between all of the acts you know, that are around in the city. And Mike had found out that yeah. That guy was there in town watching comics or whatever. He wanted to go to Mike's club. And Mike found out and got him to throw him out of his club because he's one of the guys that would steal jokes from North American uh, acts. So they would steal jokes from fucking anyone, Seinfeld, whoever it was, and then give it to, to their, their comics. You want to know something that someone told me when I was in this comic, when I was in Paris, told me about this guy. So he basically goes, this guy got famous. I don't know if he got famous first, but basically what he did is... Like he has a stand-up special that Chris Rock is the executive producer of the stand-up special, and he basically translated Chris Rock's act into French because it's not like you know you don't just translate the words like you can't like like I spoke to like a comic there and he's like I have a different act in English than in French because yeah. like I don't do the same jokes because they just don't really go over it. But this guy basically 
translated Chris Rock's act into French for like a big special and just basically does Chris Rock jokes, but in French. But Chris Rock's like knows and is the executive producer of it. And that's what got this guy really famous. Yeah, from, from what I heard, they uh, what they would do in the beginning is they would steal that stuff. And then they would, when they'd get caught, they would either put people in the credits or they would ask, hey, do you want to make money off this? But it wasn't a case of, hey, can you executive produce this? Oh, he just basically stole it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, shit like that was happening. So Mike found out, and this guy apparently was going to sell some uh, Netflix special, some shit, and Netflix was there. And at one of the, the person representing Netflix was there, and Mike was drinking champagne. And they're like, hey, we heard you've been talking a lot of shit about this guy. Why are you making it difficult? And Mike's like, I'm not talking shit. You guys are the industry. You can't give huge contracts to people who are stealing jokes, and then you have regular comics who get robbed, get nothing. This is fucking crazy, you know? And then I forgot yeah, what they, sure. they what they said. They said, like, oh, well, why don't you talk it out with him or whatever? And then Mike started losing his shit. He goes, because the guy was threatening Mike. And Mike's like, does he think this is, like, a, the 90s? Like, it's a rap beef? If this is a rap beef, I'm fucking Biggie. And he threw down the <laughs> he threw down oh, a really? champagne glass, but it was carpet. So he was in his head. He's like, this is going to shatter. And it just went, dun-dun, <laughs> like, on the carpet. But they got the message. The Netflix guys got the message. And like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is Mike doing? He went super hardcore. He's like, I'm the only one defending comedy. And he's, he's trying to smash it. And it just bounced. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because they're like there, they're probably just like have different rules, you know? Like they're just like, they don't have. That was their excuse. Just, they were telling Mike, look, they're doing their thing. We're just trying to make our money. This guy's popular there. And Mike was just so against it because he's he's always, he feels like, you know, he he attained a certain level and, yeah. and he's lucky to have it. But he's not going to turn his back on on actual stand-ups and stand-up comedy. He can't be like, well, it doesn't bother me. That's why he keeps fighting with, like, uh, Gad Elmaleh, who fucking... Yeah, yeah. His oh, whole I didn't know that he has a beef with Gad. Oh, yeah, dude. His whole fucking thing is counterfeit, that Gad guy. Um, oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. And same thing. During know, that time, he was around. That guy's a, he's a piece yeah. of shit, that Gad guy. Everything I've heard from people that have had experiences with him, it's yeah. always been, it's so always it's, been so shit. So it's basically just like the French comics, like the France French comics, they just basically all steal. Yeah, the France one. And it's different because here in Quebec, they try because they see America and they try to emulate. So, mm -hmm. uh, but not, they try to be like, all right, we can get that level too. We can have as quality, you know, the quality of writing and we can get there. Whereas in France, because it was a new art form, people weren't aware of what's happening. So the ones that were, were stealing it and then recycling it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what it seemed like. Like, I remember going there and they're like, yeah, they're like, this whole idea of like this stand up comedy style is pretty new here. And this was five years ago. And I think at that point they had maybe had it for five or 10 years or something. Yeah, it's super new. But we got guys like uh, my buddy Sugar Sammy. He went down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y you know, Sammy? He was big. Yeah, I know Sammy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he fucking, because he went down there and he won, I think, last year, uh, French Comedian of the Year in France. He's not even from there. Right, but the, how are they able to compete with him? It's like he's been doing it for 25 years or whatever. Destroys, like yeah, destroys. Like, right. they don't know what they're doing. It's like he's with open micers. So he he's under, I think, like, France has talent. He's like the Simon Cowell of that show, like one of the judges. He went there and just dominated the scene, bro. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, so I'll just take over. And he's just destroyed. I mean, he, he has a crazy advantage, right? Yeah, yeah, big, big time. And I, you notice it, too. Like, uh, you'll probably feel it if you go to another city. And they're not that good at stand up, and you're just fucking around on stage, but yeah. you're dominant. You notice the the differences. It happened to me oh, here when sure. I started doing French. When you started doing French there, yeah. Yeah, because I don't speak the language as well, but I started last okay. year because Mike was 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 forcing me, and then I noticed that their top comics are great, but there's a, a gap somewhere. It's not like if you go to New York, well, you know, you'll see 15 guys one night and maybe six will be shit. But then, you know, you have these nine guys that are fucking phenomenal. You'll be like, fuck, these guys can write. It doesn't happen. Especially in this city, right. you're not going to have that many. So you'll have these gaps. And then since I had all this, all these years, a decade in English, when I came over, I was already comfortable. Mm -hmm. So they were just yeah, expecting. Yeah, you're like a good performer. And yeah. All that. So I had that part. And the fact that my accent in French kind of, uh, they're like, oh, it's kind of goofy. It's something different. Mm -hmm. It helped out. Are you born in Montreal? I was born in Montreal, but being a Greek guy, I have a heavy accent. Right, right, yeah. right. And you, and you just like, there's that whole thing where like Patrick Hakim was like, he's where he's like, you know, it's like you born in Montreal and like you don't really speak French. Yeah, the thing is I speak French, <laughs> but I was always embarrassed of the accent because it was so heavy. Oh. And then, but everybody was fucking with my head because then when I leave... Like in Montreal, they all have different accents. Mm -hmm. So like the typical Montreal accent doesn't sound like like mine. So like when I listen to the radio here, I get frustrated because I don't like the way they, they speak. Yeah. And I think it has something to do with the media I consumed as a child. 
wasn't local. I consumed a lot of American content. Forest, so forest. I didn't, I don't speak like them on the radio here. And then it's just fucking weird for me. Yeah. Cause I think Patrick said, he's like, he doesn't really speak French that well. He's like, no, and he doesn't have a Montreal accent, Patrick either. No, no, not really. He speaks more like a, like Italian guy from Woodbridge. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like his buddy Guido. They grew <laughs> up together. They both have that same, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Guido, same thing. Guido, yeah. Guido, yeah. Yeah. They, they have the same fucking, I don't know. It's, a uh, all the, I don't know where it is. It's, uh, yeah. it's a different Italian. thing, but I don't, ha- well, I don't have the Patrick's Montreal accent. Italian, he's what? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Patrick's not Italian. No, Patrick Kim's not, but I know that he... Uh, Guido is obviously... Guido, all, both Guidos are Italian. Cocomelo and Garasso, they're both uh, super... Right, right, right. Who the fuck else is named Guido? Yeah, Guido, I know. He has that funny joke or whatever where he's like, he's like, he's named Guido and his brother's name's, I can't remember, and his like, dad's name's like Jeff. Yeah, they're like, just so regular names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both his parents have like super regular names and him and his brother have like the most Italian fucking names. Yeah, they're helping their kids assimilate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, it's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, I'm glad that you fucking uh, you got to experience comedy in another country because now it seems like it's a luxury. Oh, big time. I mean, that's the thing. That's the one cool thing about the U.S. is like the U.S. is like just so different all over. And it's such a big country where it's like, you know, there's parts that are warm and there's like dude, there's parts that are like we, me and Ryan were just in Austin like three weeks ago. It's like it's open. Like everything's open there. Like they're and they're like they're not closing anything. They have no intention of closing shit. They're just like, they're open and. You guys were there three weeks ago? Yeah. Oh, fuck. It would have been. God damn. That's a. Because now you guys got Rogan down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we weren't there for Rogan. We no, no. I'm there. saying that. That would have been a fucking. That's a good thing to get on now. Fucking plug oh, the videos oh, and everything. Oh, God damn. Amazing. Um, he, yeah, he, like, I know he knows about Ryan, but I think he's just, he's got a crazy backlog of people. Dude, he, he must. He must have the most fucked up backlog right now of, of the people that want to get on there. Ever since he became more mainstream, like acceptable, and everybody, even like from Miley Cyrus, was like, I'll jump on Matthew McConaughey. Right. Oh, Dude, he must just have two years planned. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And the whole Spotify thing, too, because like I didn't realize this, but like he's actually not going to, you're only going to be able to listen to this on Spotify, uh, the show on Spotify in two weeks. Yeah. Like you oh, is it December? Spotify. I thought it was from January that it's starting. No, I th- well, I saw him post about it, but I thought it was gonna like I thought it was like an ad deal where it's like Spotify was just gonna own all the ads even if it played on other, but it's not. It's like you need to have Spotify specifically. Yeah, so they're gonna pull all the old videos down. I think so. Yeah, and like the videos are all gonna be on Spotify. Um, yeah, like the videos are all gonna be on Spotify. The audio is gonna be all on Spotify, and uh, yeah, I think it's not gonna be off of you. I don't know if it's gonna be on YouTube, but I was listening to his episode of uh, the most recent one with Chappelle and Donnell Rawlings, and they wanted to play something, and he's like, "Oh, we can't play it because of copyright." But he's like, "He's like, I wonder if we're gonna be able to play this on Spotify." So it seems like they're gonna take it off of YouTube. Yeah, because I had heard something like that that they're gonna take it off of YouTube. But I had read into it, and it looked like it was just like a an ad kind of deal where they were like, we're just going to own all the ads, but I think they're just the full thing. So Yeah, I think they're going, the, the entire library is going to belong to them. They're going to go on there. And he did everyone, in the beginning, a lot of people were talking shit, but not only did what he do was the right fucking move for him, obviously, but he also did every one of us a favor, and people didn't realize, that he set a price point. He legitimized podcasting. He, oh, yeah. he did such a big favor for to all of us. You know, um, we're not all going to get a $100 million pie, but I mean, just the fact that he legitimized our operations and we can go out there and seek that revenue. And I, I was so shocked in the beginning that fucking jealous comics wouldn't see it. They would just get mad. It's like, you, you dummy. He didn't do anything wrong. He did everything right for him. And he just set a price point for you to go out there and get some kind of ad revenue. You idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, people, I mean, don't don't think about it that way i guess but whatever it's it, the pie is very big yeah the pie is huge there's no there's no limit i love how people think all oh, of they listen to that they're not going to listen to me there's other reasons why they don't listen to you steve it's yeah not, exactly <laughs> totally yeah it's not because they listen to someone else so i do feel that that was like a very canadian kind of centric way of thinking about it because people in the u.s really don't think about stuff that way but i felt like in the entertainment and i get it because it's obviously like it's smaller there and it's bigger here but it's like the people who are like, you know, the haves here, like don't aren't really like threatened. Whereas like in Canada, it's like, especially in Toronto, it's like it very much felt that way. Like, there's a lot of aggr- I mean, you- aggression from Toronto. Me, I see things differently because I feel like I'm lucky to be doing everything yeah. I'm doing now, dude. Like I'm so, and I get happy when I see comics doing something because I feel like my community is the comedy community. 
So when yeah, I see absolutely. a stand up being successful and you know they're not pricks or anything like that, I, I get excited. And I feel like everything I have is um, is a, is a luxury. Like just to be able to do this, do the podcast, the stand up, everything. I instead of working uh, nine to five with some asshole over my head, I feel like I'm winning. Yeah. So I don't have yeah, to. I'm not competing with anyone. I'm having fun. I get to hang out with my friends. We get to shoot the shit, talk shit. Why would I fucking get mad at comics? Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. But yeah, there's some that are just petty, I guess. Oh yeah, those. But I uh, mean, I'm quick now. Plus, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not scared of confrontation. So yeah, the, yeah. I know in Toronto, I heard that, um, like I've heard some horror stories from your, your comedy scene, but uh, I remember starting out here whenever there was some kind of a, oh, he said the wrong thing. We got to ban him from this room or whatever. I was always the guy that was never fucking scared of that shit. I was like, yeah. ban me from your fake room, you fucking dummy. I'm not, oh, I know. what am I going to do? Those are like banned from an open mic and you're like, who gives a shit? Yeah, this isn't a real thing. Yeah. You, exactly. I was banned once from a room here that I didn't know existed. And then when somebody told me, oh, you know, you can't perform there because you're banned. I was like, bro, I've never heard of this fucking room. How did I get banned? <laughs> like, because the stuff you talk about and, you know, you and Mike, you see some controversial things. I was like, this is absurd. <laughs> the ban had no effect on me. <laughs> what's, what's going on with Mike's, uh, his, like, uh, case or whatever? Okay, so this is, this is how you know everything's fucked up here. So it finally got past the human rights phase, right? I don't know if you heard about yeah. this, but they found out that, um, so the human rights tribunal ordered Mike to pay and they said yeah, what he yeah, did was 42, wrong. 42,000. And then we found out, I don't know if you heard about this, but we found out that two of those guys that were on that committee, uh, were child molesters. No. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And one of them, this is the funniest like, thing. Like that, convicted ones. Yeah. Like one of them settled out of court for banging like a 14 year old or some shit. And it cost him 40 G's. Yeah, and Mike was like, if for 8 G's more, you tell him I could have fucked this kid. <laughs> he's, he's getting and then he's like, they're like, we're getting you for that one. Too. We're getting you for that one too. Yeah, so he, on his new uh, hour in French, because y- you're not supposed to name names here or whatever, Mike opens the show by naming names. Like He's like, and if I had their fucking addresses, these pedophiles, I'd give those out too. He goes, so that happened. And then Mike's like, all right, I'm appealing this shit. So I think the court of appeals was like split on him here in Quebec. So Mike said, really? All right, fuck that. I'm going to the Supreme Court. So now we're waiting. The Supreme Court's going to give him a date. He's going to go to the Supreme Court of Canada to fight for He's something. Win for sure. He, the Supreme Court, he has to win because they would set a fucked up precedent. But the only yeah. reason people are forgetting, like, why is he doing this? The legal fees alone have, I think, run up to about 300 Gs, two, two something, 200 something. Yeah, it's like more than... More than the initial case. But he had to do it instead of paying the 32 Gs because he said, if I don't do this and I'm in a position where I could defend myself, Yeah, I would have fucked over every single comedian in the country because if that precedent was set, everyone would have been fucked, he goes. So I couldn't just pay it and, you know, let it uh, get brushed aside, he goes. There was no way I was setting that precedent. He goes, uh, I'm fucking going all the way. Mm-hmm. Crazy. That's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah dude, the Supreme the, Court. The first guy, Guy Earl or whatever. Was he the Vancouver he guy? It. Yeah, he was like, a, that, that guy I felt the worst about. That guy was literally like, you know, been doing comedy for... T- a year with like uh, an open mic host and like they're like <laughs> the human rights tribunal insane and he didn't do anything crazy right he was fighting hecklers it's like they some chick like i think threw a drink in his face and then he like knocked her glasses off her head or something and he like called them like dykes or something but you're like i don't know all of it seems within reason oh <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you know they're like exactly it all seems within reason but then you're also it's like really like you're gonna like di- like the guy didn't make like in his entire career, you know, like probably made two hundred bucks doing stand up in like some in a year meals. if he was lucky. If he was lucky, in his he first was lu- but he was like, oh, you know, a year in open micer. He's like, he maybe made two hundred bucks, and then they ding him for ten grand. Like, but also, how do you say it's a human rights violation? Is every fight a human rights violation? I don't know. It's, it's Canada. He should have identified as something else. Yeah, oh, that was before you were able to do that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have his so way that out. Was when that was that, because that was like in like 2011 or 12 or something. That's when that move was not on the table still. So this, yet. so this guy must did he quit comedy? I don't know anything about this guy. He was. I actually had a friend of like a guy who I grew up with, my brother's friend, who had messaged me randomly and knew this guy, and he was like an engineer or something. So he had a real job. So he basically, but yeah, that was it for comedy for him. He was like, "Fuck this!" Like not worth it how fucking crazy i mean i can't imagine even mike sometimes i'll tell him like do you realize how crazy this is he's like yeah it's nuts like just yeah. you're going he's going to supreme court for a fucking joke it's oh. it's so orwellian i know and i never realized with his thing too that like that joke 
it wasn't like on a special or wasn't like it wasn't aired anywhere. It was straight up like they just wrote about it. And that's like how it became known. Like otherwise he was just doing it for like in private, essentially, like so at shows. It was on one of his specials, but it wasn't it didn't cause any controversy. The joke was out, but you can only see it if you're 18, obviously, because you had to see it in one of the clubs or on his special right. that was 18 and over. Years later, uh, some journal the journalists here in Quebec are, are garbage. Like they're, they're always looking for controversy, and right. a journalist brought it up to like we keep saying the kid, but the guy's an adult. To the adult, hey, uh, what do you think of Mike's joke that he said? And they mm -hmm. brought it up to the kid. The kid's like, I don't heard it. Sounds like it's mean. Fuck him. Like you know, whatever the fuck the kid said. Uh, right. And it seemed to just be like, okay, the kid doesn't like the joke. Nobody gives a shit. But then um, they had released a report on how much uh, comics uh, Quebec comedians made during a year. And Mike was the only idiot that responded to like the newspaper when he told him that he had made like uh, 300 Gs. And the day <laughs> after his letter, his lawyer got a letter <laughs> that they were That's suing so him. Funny. And he's like, what the fuck? But apparently they tried some sketchy shit because I remember hearing about how the they had, so they were taken to the Human Rights Tribunal, which already you hear, like when I hear human rights, me, I'm thinking fucking Holocaust. I'm thinking big stuff, you know? Like, yeah, like someone's like at, a, at work and they get like fired for like being like a certain race. Or yeah. Like, you know, They're like, yeah, there's no Jews here, bro. You're out of here. And he's like, what the exactly. fuck? Okay, then I get exactly. it. That to me makes 100% perfect sense. So Mike hears this. He's like, human rights. What the fuck are we talking about? And at one point they had offered, they had said something like, look, if, uh, if, if we heard you got a condo in Florida, if you if you let us rent out the condo for like a month and help produce his rap album, the kid wants to rap album, we we will drop the Stop. charge or whatever. Yeah, the some kid wanted to do a rap. Oh yeah, album? and I think he still made one. He made some kind of rock or How rap album. He? He's like he must be in his twenties, thirties now. I don't know what the fuck he is? We still call him the kid because he looks like a retired fish, but he's he's a man. He's <laughs> he's a grown ass man. So yeah. I, I think when Mike heard that, I think that was the thing that was like really so human rights. Like I'm violating human rights, but if I help you produce some shitty album, we're cool. He's like fuck that shit. I'm not paying anything. We're, we're, we're fighting this to the end. He's like, fuck that yeah, shit. This is like bullshit. Clearly trying to like extort him at that point. Yeah, and people said in his school, they go, was he bullied at school? This joke must have got him bullied. But the kids in his school were too young. They didn't see the joke. And apparently the kid was uh, popular in school because he used to sing for like the Pope and shit and Celine Dion. So the kid didn't have a yeah. bad childhood because of this joke. It didn't happen. Yeah, like didn't affect him at all. No. And the joke keeps getting misquoted too. That's another thing. So whenever they translate it to English, they purposely omit right. certain parts and they make it seem like Mike tried to physically murder this child. But it was just in a joke. <laughs> he goes, this kid's unkillable. He's like, I tried drowning him. And he goes, Mike makes light of the fact that he tried to drown him. No, no, he doesn't make light of the fact that he tried to drown him. He never, there's no fact. He never tried to drown him. The, this is, there <laughs> is such this weird assault on jokes right now, specifically, because people are like, if it suits their narrative, they're completely willing to just be like dishonest and take them out of context. Like, do you see like the the Steve Bannon thing where Steve Bannon basically got kicked off of like, like they took his podcast down. What? You know Steve Bannon, he was like, he was I know like who Steve Bannon is. So he basically was like on his podcast was like, they were talking about Fauci and he's like something about, cause he like hates Fauci or whatever. And he's like, Oh, he's like, I want to see Fauci's like head on a spike or whatever, like Pike outside of the white house or something. Like clearly you listen, like I listen to the thing. You're like, he's obviously making a joke. He's not like threatening to kill Fauci. Obviously. Right? Yeah. But then they literally were like, they banned him from, I think they took him off of YouTube. Like he got like banned, like I think his Twitter account, like all these things. And they're like, yeah, you threatened to kill Fauci. And so these are violations of our terms. And so therefore like we're removing you from all these platforms. And you're like, what? You're, but yeah, but you're like, you don't literally think he was like actually threatening to kill him. Do you like, you're like, you don't actually think that. And they're, and you know, I'm sure if you got one of these people like alone, off the record, they would be like, no, we don't really think he was threatening to murder him, but they're like, we want to shut this guy down. So they're like, like, well, for this context, we'll say that. That is fucked, bro. Yeah. That is so Steve Bannon guy, but I'm just like, no, no, I, like, like I'll laugh. Just when you said Steve Bannon makes me laugh, but it's like, it doesn't matter. Cause I'm not going to let the line be different for him. It should be the same for him. Yeah, me and you, but we also, fuck around. Like you could be a leftist comedian and say like, "I want to kill Trump and literally cut his head off and put it on a pike," and they'll be like, "Yeah, that's fine." Dude, I see that all the time. I've seen that on Twitter. I've seen that all the time. It's, it's always fine. Like Kathy Griffin didn't get kicked off of fucking Twitter. 
No, she actually got mad Not at that Trump. I want her to. No, I don't want her to either, but she got mad. I remember at Trump because she said it's Trump's fault because he was offended and then his fans got offended and then I lost work because, yeah. well, no, it's just the market. I don't know. They got, like, that's a weird thing that you tweeted. It's, she, you sh- she didn't lose work. She was like, she played like fucking sold out like Carnegie Hall or something. Get the she, fuck out of here. So what was she complaining she about? Have- well, the one thing she did have was like when she would fly, like she she got put on fucking like actual lists and stuff, <laughs> and like no, she did like government, but like she. That's kind of funny. I don't know if that is kind of funny. And, like, you and Mohammed if, like, get over there, <laughs> right? And I don't know if like a regular person would get that. Like if a regular person goes and fucking holds ahead of the because like remember like I don't, like I don't know how old you are, but like most of my life. You couldn't just threaten to kill the president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, most no. Of my life, no, that's, that was, that's like, true. Kind of a big deal to like go like on fucking, you know, any sort of public forum and just threaten the life of the president. Like that was like everybody knew. You're like, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. That'll get you in trouble. Yeah, that was a no no. That was like a big no no. <laughs> it was like and then, forever. And then all of a sudden, Trump's president. And people were like, yeah, that's whatever. Let's just kill the host of The Apprentice. Yeah, exactly. But you're like, I guess. But it was like, I remember being like, it's so weird. It's fine now. I, you know, I, I was thinking about this, the fact that if I say I'm acting, if it's a sketch and not something I'm doing on stage stand-up, it's a completely different standard that I'm judged by. Because you mm-hmm. can be on screen. Dude, you could be a pedophile. And it's like, look at this method actor. This guy, I really believed he was a pedophile. But on stage, if you make fun of pedophiles, people are like, what is he talking about? How can you make fun of pedophilia? This is a serious thing. It's so <laughs> absurd. I know. And then if you were like, you know, say you're like as a joke where you threaten to kill somebody and someone's like, if they write down the joke, right? Like they're like here, like it's in a newspaper describing your joke. And then they go, they don't like be like, yeah, but he was like killing. Remember the Louis C.K. thing where Louis came back from the cellar oh. and they were like, remember the one joke? And then they were like, the like the recording came out or whatever and they were like yeah he was like uh joking about the parkland shooting yeah. and they were like this guy's so horrible and the one thing that never got brought up in that article was that he was fucking smashing like like that the place was like erupting in laughter but they don't put that context in because it doesn't suit them no they dude i that was i remember that because one of the things that we were saying here was like well if he's so if this is such a terrible too soon bad joke why the fuck is everyone laughing why the fuck is everyone laughing? His job, his look, our agreement is I'm going on stage. I'm going to try to make you laugh. If I've accomplished this, then clearly my intention was to make you laugh. No one's fucking crying. Of course. Well, and also he's a comedian. Yeah, that's his job. It's his, it's in the fucking description. Yeah. But it was just crazy because like they, they was just so dishonest because they would be like, yeah, Louis C.K. was saying all these horrible things. And then they just like failed to leave out the fact that like everybody was loving it there. But all, all they these... said was like one person left because they were like some woman was like, oh, if I knew Louis C.K. was going to be here, I would not have come here. Oh, but you guys Which, imagine you're her boyfriend, too. And you're like, I really oh. want to watch Louis C.K., though. And she makes you leave. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're like you're probably like not even you're probably like on especially with the seller. It's like it's all tourists. So you're like you're like in New York for a weekend. Louis C.K. <laughs> is talking, your girlfriend's like, let's go. Oh, no. And then her next article is, I was the victim of domestic violence. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> it's, dude, but you, you guys are unlucky because in that fucking city, I've also noticed you guys have some fucking great comics that I love, but you also have these pieces of fucking shit that just want to yeah. rat everyone out. And well, that's f- mostly Seth Simon. Oh, that piece of garbage, bro. I don't like He's that fucking guy. He's not a Dude, the, the thing is, I, so I was taking a look. Like when I first found out about this piece of shit because he was fucking around with Shane Gillis. Yeah. I fucking love Shane Gillis, bro. You don't fuck. Shane Gillis one of the nicest dudes. Oh, Shane Gillis, so oh, I know he's so one of the nicest yeah. fucking guys, bro. So I didn't appreciate that shit because when he first when he got the SNL gig, I was like a fucking cheerleader. I felt like I got sure, the dude, fucking I didn't SNL even know gig. Him and I remember I DM'd him that day. I knew who he was, but I didn't know him personally. I literally DM'd him that day. I go, dude, that's awesome. Like I got you, off a you goddamn gave a plane. Hope for everybody. Yeah, that's how that's how I felt. I was like, fucking Shane Gillis. Yeah, Shane made it. I got if when I got on the plane, whatever. There was some controversy, but none none of that. I got off the plane. I had all texts from people like, yo, your boy got kicked off uh, SNL. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and then when all the details came through, I was like, who's this piece of shit? And I did some digging, and he called himself like a comic. This guy's not a fucking comic. This guy's not a yeah. comedian. Never, yeah, he never made anyone laugh. That's why he was so fucking spiteful. And when you listen to that podcast, he's clearly fucking around. They're joking. It's not what they described. He, they said it's some kind of anti-Asian. He hates Asians. Get the fuck out of here. Dummy shit. 
And that was it. Was it made me fucking furious. No, so you guys have it's, it's, pieces it's, of shit it's, like it's, that. That was the, the first. Yeah, yeah. The first week I moved to New York, actually, that that stuff all happened. Like that was my first week in New York. Was basically like he had just. I think. I think maybe like the second day I moved to New York was when he got fired from uh, SNL or something like that. And then like I was at his like first setback after getting fired. At okay. The stand and it was like. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was a whole. It was literally like my first week in New York, and I was like, "This is fucking awesome." Except for the oh, assholes that are ready to rat you out. Well, no, not for me. I was fucking. I moved there. I was like, nobody knew who I was. I was just like, it's just cool to like be in the mix with all this stuff, you know? Like, it is fucked though that you guys have. It's basically such a center for good comedy, and then you have these mm-hmm. fucking weasels. And I only hear about them because people bitching like online, like this guy. I heard about like now, like I know. Um, uh, Luis J. Gomez keeps fighting with that uh, Jake Flores guy who... Jake Flores. Well, he's like Seth Simon's friend. They're all like friends. Okay, it's a whole... Okay, that's why that makes more sense because you know what I couldn't understand and no one's fucking said it is, look, man, if you were successful, you wouldn't be bitching this much because I see this guy, Jake Flores, he's still bitching. He's still tweeting random shit like, oh, look at what this comedian said. It's offensive or whatever. But dude, you're not good at... Com- if you were good at comedy, you would not have to pay your rent by drinking your own semen. Like you wouldn't, <laughs> like if you got eating to that level, eating, eating, it was very chunky. But if you get to that level, yeah, it was off. Fuck, but if you get to that level, clearly you're shit. Clearly you're yeah. shit. You can't talk shit about people that are successful. They're doing it right. Come the fuck he on. And man. Ryan, we're kind of talking about this though, and like we're actually like kind of at the point where we think they've kind of resigned themselves to being trolls and they know it like because they maybe. started out maybe being seriously but now i do think they're like it's one of those things where it's like the more oxygen they're given like the more they're kind of enjoying it like you see like the creek in the cave closed down yeah there's dude. like there there is two like alternate universes in comedy because when the creek and cave closed down like i've done a few shows there but it's like obviously i just moved moved here but like, so all these comics were like, oh, it was the best place ever. Like, I miss it so much. And then you go to their side, like the Jake Flores, like Seth Simons. And they were all like, what a toxic place. Like, that was the fucking worst place. Good riddance. Like, it's That's psychotic. two opposite realities. But for them, it was that. I don't know. Like, I don't know what they're like. It's all, you know, you hear hate speech and they platformed all these like people, blah, blah, blah. And like Platformed. the owner was this. And, you know, it's like. Come the fuck on. Just say the truth. I went there. I did many sets in front of strangers, and they did not laugh. Just say the yeah. truth. People that like don't know me won't laugh at me. Other comics were mean to me. Oh, like, they're like, some comics didn't like me, and you're like, yeah, great. You think every comic's ever liked that I've ever come across liked me? I don't no. go fucking complain to Comedy HR. You're like, you just move on with your life. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should work on that schedule, by the way, Comedy <laughs> HR. Yeah, that would be <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, dude. But no, it's a, especially a guy who set the comedy works on fire and then left. And even you felt bad about that. <laughs> you see the difference. Yeah. I knew I, knew I left that cigarette somewhere. Yeah. Well, that, again, that would be funny. You're responsible for eight COVID deaths and the comedy works. <laughs> and the comedy works burning down. Fuck, bro. You got shit to do. I'm going to let you go. Yeah, do yeah you- I do. I do. I got to... Gotta run. Look, but be yeah, this is fun shit, dude. Thanks for having me on. Dude, hopefully one day we're in the same fucking city and we can do this properly because the Skype thing dude, is fucking wanna- weird. I want to, yeah, a hundred percent, dude. When stuff gets reopened, I would love to, I'm, I can speak for Ryan too. We would love to come to Montreal. When stuff gets reopened, we're going to get organized with Mike. You guys are going to come here and you're going to fucking perform. Uh, yeah, we're okay. going to set something else. It, it's it's going to, it's going to be fun. When shit opens so, up, I'm going to be sending you a message. Yeah. It's so funny. Like Americans I meet and they're like, um, they'll be like, oh, you're from Canada. Like, well, I'm thinking of going, where should I go? I'm like, they're like, should I go to Toronto? I'm like, no, just go to Montreal. Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> go where they have strippers, bro. Strippers that you yeah, can touch. Yeah. Go I to don't Montreal. Like in Toronto, but it's just like I'm like I don't know. Toronto's like, especially people in New York. I'm like, yeah. So you're gonna go from New York to just like a worse version of New York. I'm like, go that's to Vancouver, true. Go to Montreal. That's a good fucking point. No, but fucking Danny, we're, uh, I can't wait till the shit opens up. You guys are gonna come down here, both come up here rather, and uh, it's gonna be good. Absolutely. Thanks, buddy.